G'day and welcome back to the second part of our Kakadu adventure. This week you find us taking a dip at our local pool for the week, Magook Waterfall. Before braving the 40 degree heat and exploring Anbangbang rock art and then Neuralangi Lookout to soak up the majesty of this stunning national park. loving the addition of this sign. <laughs> We've seen this a few places now. So you've got the obvious croc, no swimming, but even don't get too close to the water's edge because they'll get you. <laughs> I wonder if it's to scale, how big its mouth is. Probably. Seems to be getting that human in a very mm. interesting spot. I know. This is cool. Oh my goodness. We're the only ones here though. Which yeah. always makes me a little bit worried about crocs, especially mm -hmm. after all those signs. Yeah, but it's a magic spot. How cool is this? It's got all this rock surrounding a pretty epic waterfall. And I can see a ton of fish in there. Very cool spot, definitely worth the walk. Very hot, so I'm pretty keen to get in the water. What do you reckon? Yeah. Just jump in? Yeah, I reckon. Right, let's go close up and get in. Although this is obvious, I think it's worth calling out that corrugations, like coming to these bush camps, which we've been doing quite a bit lately and in the past, usually lead to something like what's happened here, which is something that happened last time on corrugates 
and again something rattles loose or out and this time it was our drawer so he came in and the drawer had flown out again and I'd managed to fix it last time by reattaching this and sort of putting it all back together but I think this time it's probably beyond me fixing it because it looks like something's actually broken but it's worth calling out that corrugates mean that you need to check your vehicle a lot so the van has a lot of points that we're constantly finding that we need to check a couple of these are in the windows frames here with the nuts and bolts on the side here which aren't anti or don't sort of screw lock so every time i get a little screwdriver into those they've always loosened a bit especially on the corrugates and the other one's the back of the car so the ranger has a tray rack and on that the bolts are constantly needing to be checked especially where we've fitted in things on top it's not something we knew about that much getting on the road it's obvious now thinking about it and it's something that a lot of four drivers and people with vans have told us if you're getting on corrugates you almost need to make it as part of your you know strip down and spin up routine to check all the bolts before you hit it again otherwise things are just going to start getting worse and worse and worse and start falling off so i might show you a couple of things that we are now checking regularly uh, and maybe it'll help you if you're ever getting a van or taking your car down corrugates so to illustrate this point you can see here with these screws that's on they were tightened before these corrugates so each time there's a significant amount of tightening that needs to go into these and you wouldn't think much of it until you get a little screwdriver out get in there and you start to realize so i'm trying to do this backwards that this actually turns quite a lot to get back to to tight and that's purely going down the corrugates that rattle holding these windows in just loosens and loosens and loosens and i bet you i can go around the whole van now tighten each one of these there's two on every window and there's one two three four five six windows at least one side of this will need doing on every window so yeah something to check so in the same vein of things that we're noticing and just things specifically to the ranger and i guess specifically to the tray rack and also the rack or the, the tray cover that we've got on the Ranger. And I figured, you know, this is gonna be different for all vehicles. And I by no means pretend to be an expert, just something we've noticed. And if we can help other people not make the mistake that we have and lose bolts and have it fall out and, you know, potentially cause bigger issues, I'd share my experiences. Um, plus Sophie asked me to do it. So a <laughs> um, couple of things here. So we came in and actually we've lost one of the bolts and things at the front here and when i came and checked it again what i think the movement of this max track uh you know mount has been doing when it rattles over corrugates and also this it started loosening all the bolts of the underlying tray rack or sorry <laughs> rack cover so you can see here that once again that's loose And that's pretty loose as well. And that's the same thing, corrugates, four driving, all of that just loosens it. Once, And I can do the same probably with this rack here, go around finding all the bolts and all the Allen key pieces that have sort of loosened a bit as we go. Especially ones where anything rattles, where this is rattling, I'm pretty much having to check the two bolts on top of this or four bolts two on each leg every time we do any four-wheel driving for a decent amount of the day so every trip really because it's usually loose which is worrying because if you don't check it and these come loose it starts doing bad things to your rack it starts shearing off the steel or this falls off entirely or it just does damage to your car so hey if this can help anyone, and I know it's blatantly obvious for anyone who's been on the road, but if you're about to get on the road or thinking about it, corrugates, four-wheel driving, check all these bolts. Each time you come back, there's probably a whole bunch of bolts and things on this car that I'm not checking and are coming loose, but as soon as you know they loosen, you know to tighten them. So unfortunately, it's gonna be a little bit of a game of sort of whack-a-mole around the car, trying to find where things are getting loose often 
and tighten it up again. They're the key things we've started noticing since we've been on the road, uh, van and car. And the other thing is obviously the van, you gotta tighten your wheel nuts because they loosen. And it's something that we were told, but a lot of people haven't been told. Every major trip you do, check the wheel nuts because they get scarily loose each trip. And I think over time, you wouldn't want a wheel, like a wheel coming off your van is probably the worst thing that could happen or losing wheel nuts is still pretty bad. So check those things and yeah, I'll uh, keep you updated if I find anything else. Just gotten back from Maggot Quarterfall, feeling so refreshed after that swim and we've come back to camp and there's still no one else here. So Dunk's outside making a campfire. We thought we'd cook dinner outside tonight. We've had a look in the fridge and we still have so much meat left over from when Dunk bought that stuff for my birthday in Litchfield. We've picked the eye fillet, which is both of our favorites. So I'm gonna make a slaw to go with it. Just super easy, nice and healthy. And I've got all the ingredients like cabbage, pear, carrot, maybe even some beetroot, mix it all together. And I think that'll go really nicely with the steak. <laughs> How good do these steaks look? When I bought them, they said they were something like, I don't know how long they've been dry aged for. It probably said on the packet that I've just thrown away, but dry aged fillet steaks. Didn't want to cook these on the barbecue because I couldn't really control the heat. So I'm hoping cooking them in here, they're absolutely perfect and can get them nice and medium rare, just how you like it. But looking at them, they just look so good. How's the salad gone? Mm. I think it, well, I've tasted it. I put quite a lot of wasabi in the sauce for the slaw. So wasabi? Yeah. Steak and wasabi, yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah, yeah. I thought it would go. Easy. I like wasabi on anything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You looking forward to these? Yeah, I've been looking forward to these since my birthday. Since, but I, since you didn't pick them on your birthday. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I agreed with your logic that if we put them on the barbecue, that might be a bit harder to control the heat. Oh, I can't wait. Smells good. I went and collected firewood, got the fire ready to go, pre-set up so we can light that bad boy up uh, once we've had our dinner. And these are, I think these are pretty well done. I'm gonna have to pull them out now, chop them open and it's the moment of truth. So I'm never hundred percent sure until I slice that first piece and see if I got medium rare or if I got rare rare and just slightly cooked edges or cooked all the way through. There are all the options. So hope they're medium rare, let's get them out. See what we got. Doesn't it? What's it if I do say so myself. Purples and all sorts. There we go. Yummy. Excuse the flies, there are so many flies. Try to work out what pieces that. That looks so good. It's good, doesn't it? <laughs> Whoa. And it tastes good too. I'm not sure you could fit any more meat in your bowl. You're hiding all the salad. A good covering of fillet steak over salad. I'm not going to complain. No. Although we are trying to eat less meat and we wouldn't usually eat this much red meat in a week, but when in Rome. I 
thought I'd show you a quick camp tour. So we are staying at Maguk Campground, which I reckon is awesome. Bush camping at its best. So in Kakadu, there are heaps of places to stay. You've got full caravan parks, free camps, bush camps, the whole spectrum. We wanted to be pretty central to all of the activities because Kakadu is a lot larger than Litchfield or at least the activities are more spread out. So unless you want to do loads of driving every day, find yourself a central base to stay at. Plus this campground is only one kilometer away from Maguk Waterfall, which is very important when you're <laughs> in 42 degree heat. We want to cool off as much as we can. So having that close by is amazing. Plus, speaking to some of the rangers, they've said that it's actually probably one of the best falls at this time of year because not all of the waterfalls have any water going over them. Uh, being pre-monsoonal season or pre-monsoon season, not all the waterfalls will have water and some get closed at this time of year. So it's best to check before you get here. The drive-in is four-wheel drive recommended. So it's quite a few corrugates coming in. Pretty easy going, uh, only one small patch of a rocky stream to cross. No water here at the minute. I'd go about 60, 65 over the corrugates. That's what we found meant you could just glide. If you go too slow, you'll feel every bump and it'll take you twice as long. So camp was pretty quiet when we arrived. According to the rangers, that's a mix of COVID impact, but also because we're heading into the wet and peak was a couple of months ago. So to be expected, I suppose. It does mean though that we have had the pick of the camp spots, which is awesome. So we had a scout around when we arrived, chose the spot that we liked the most. And what we've done is we've positioned the caravan right in the sun. So yes, it's a bit warmer for us, but it means we get to maximize the charge from the solar panels, which is super important when you're bush camping and we want to recharge all our devices all the time. And then the next best thing about this camp spot, or actually I think most of the camp spots in this campground, is you have a designated fire pit and picnic benches, which means you don't have to pack away or get out your camping chairs. You've got somewhere nice and comfortable to sit and you can have a campfire. The last thing I want to show you is camp facilities. Here is where you pay your fees for camping. It is $6 per person for adults, three for kids if they're under four then they're free and for families it's 15 so super simple payment system really similar to in Litchfield all an honesty box system so you pull out your envelope fill in the details detach the slip for your permit which I forgot to do in Litchfield attach that to your caravan and then pop your payment in here and then behind me is camp toilets so long drop toilets unfortunately no showers but that's okay these long drop toilets, depending on what you think about long drop toilets, they do the job. They are fine. I thought they were totally gross when I first started camping, but the more you travel, the more you actually just appreciate having a toilet nearby. And we have a toilet in our van anyway, so if you didn't want to use them, you don't have to. And actually, a good thing to note, over here is a really useful turning circle. So that was super helpful for us when we were picking our spots. You don't have to do lots of maneuvering or three point turns. The camp itself is really spacious, so getting it van in and out is no problem. My good campground so far has been great. So far, so good. Now, I know we've done this a few times now, but, and I promise, slash caveat that if there's an even better one, then I'm gonna show it again, but hopefully, or maybe this will be the last termite mound, but I just had to come to this one because it's quite literally next to camp and I saw it when I was collecting wood the other day and it is an absolute monster. Like it's probably the same or similar height to one of the ones we saw before, but it's just huge mm. all the way around. It's like the biggest example, you know, what are they called, cathedral? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best example of what, I guess when they named it, they were thinking of when they thought cathedral because it's just tons of spires and just looks fucking amazing to be honest. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, anyway, better show you it. Dreams, I got big dreams just like baby I've been joining forces with the likes of an A-team Jumping off of buildings used to be so stimulating Now I'm reaching new heights, I'ma need the off-whites Play with the fire, you get burned All of my struggles became lessons well learned How big is that? Absolutely massive Five meters, six? I think that's as big as they get, right? Yeah, the sign I read in the said they get to about five meters but I 
could be topping six. I don't know. It's huge. And it's so wide, isn't it? I found this when I was looking for firewood the other day and I thought I'd just have to come and show you it because I know it's another termite mound, but it is truly monstrous. And I was walking around it, I was just in awe of how big it was. When you walk around it, it's just like huge and imposing. And I thought it was a really cool thing because I came around and spot, spotted this, which is like a new offshoot. I thought it was a good example of how the cathedral ones form because you quite literally just have this little base here that's come out and forming into what will be another spire up the side as it keeps getting added to and added to. And you can see, I'm gonna tap it really gently, but like, it's pretty fragile. And it's got like, the base is probably only about that big, which is insane, because you think how big and hard wearing these structures are, and it all starts with these little offshoots, and obviously how it gets its name, cathedral. Turn like mounds. I can see what you mean in this one way more than the others where you're saying that animals like lizards and stuff can hide in here during bushfires because mm. around this one you actually have like almost like cave walls around each of these. I think we're hard pressed to find a better one than this so I think this will be the last termite mound that we show. <laughs> unless, you said unless, that before. I've said that before unless there's a way bigger one but yeah, I um, I had to come and I was collecting firewood. I had to come and take you to this one, so because I thought it was pretty cool. And yeah. you like termite mounds? Yeah, so. I do. This is very impressive. The king is back like prodigal. I've been gone. I gave him time. It's been too long. Time's up. Was silent calm, but now the storm is right on. I'm not the one you can't ignore. I never pause, and I fear the pressure is on me. Luckily, I've been out here building an army. So we've just found this sign on the way into Kuinda. Yeah. And you picked the easy word to say. Yeah, I still struggled though. Sophie's gonna give us her pronunciation of the sign. So yellow water translating to the indigenous name is right up. Yellow water. Now this is <laughs> this is really hard. Okay, I'm not gonna do this justice at all. Nurungurjiba, and then if you say it faster, Nurungurjiba. Nurungurjiba. Mm, mm, yeah, um, I'm I'm trying to work it out myself. Nurungurjiba. Yeah, oh man, like I'm dyslexic, so this isn't going to help me. Nurungurjiba. I just I just had to stop because I couldn't believe just how long that word was. Yeah. Starting from one side to the other. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen characters. Wow. All right. I think that's the longest one we've seen so far. I'd hate to be writing an essay because that would be a yeah. lot of paper. <laughs> so we've come into the Neuralangi region of Kakadu today. We are here to see the rock art and maybe stick around and check out the sunset too. But we have gotten here a bit early and we've come across this billabong or billabong walk that was recommended to us by a ranger. So we found the side of the path and heading down there and I don't know if you guys can hear but there's a lot of bird noise in the trees. So well, apparently it's meant to be a great place to see a whole bunch of wildlife. Hmm. I had a look at it on wiki camps and a load of those comments were saying things around emus coming up and drinking from Whoa. it and lots of bird life. So yeah. yeah, thought we'd check it out, see what we can see. It's pretty hot again, middle of the day and we're out in it. Um, 
I don't know if everyone else is indoors, but the car park <gasps> is free and there's no one really around. So maybe we're the only idiots that are wandering around at this time of day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Soph? Oh, it's not nice when you actually have a photograph of a crocodile, which I can only assume was taken over there somewhere. It's a bit nicer when the signs just have drawings of crocodiles because then you can kind of rationalise that maybe they're here and maybe they're not. But Well, <laughs> ta-da! You see this lovely billabong behind me. Probably didn't really do our homework or use our brains and think that there wouldn't be any water in it because it's dry season. Uh, about to be wet season, but end of dry season. So I imagine this would be really nice and full of water in the wet. Cool rock behind us, mm. which I think is what we're going to capture later at sunset. But yeah, I don't think we're in any risk of seeing any crocs here. I think that sign was probably meant for, <gasps> for wet season. Um, and not a whole lot of bird life because, once again, there's no water. And I think water would have been what would have attracted the animal life. Although, it's a little um, yellow crested cockatoo up there. It's oh, crunchy, dry, isn't it? Is. It's like super crunchy, super dry. And you can, you can almost feel it on your feet. It's, yeah. like, it's like walking on moss, but it's grass. Now, if this was wet season, I definitely wouldn't be getting this close to the billabong, but I can say with a high degree of certainty <laughs> that at the moment, I'm pretty confident there's no crocs around. The last remnants of water. Yeah. Or slightly damp, muddy ground. I can't wait to get up on those rocks. Yeah. So do you reckon we can get up there? Is uh, that where the lookout is? Or? Yeah, the lookout's out there. I'm not sure exactly where on the rock. I think we best go have a look. And we've got the rock art to check out as well. That'd be cool. I'm glad we did a little walk. It was only, what, five, mi five yeah. minutes, 10 minutes from the car, the car park. park? I think the next thing to do, let's head up those rocks, mm. go check out the indigenous art, which is why we came here. Yep. And then hopefully by that time, you can have a picnic and get a good sunset. Yeah. It'd be great to get that rock with the sunset behind it or from that rock looking out to wherever the sun sets. Tell everyone what just happened. Well, I was busy talking and this bloody flies, one's just gone in my mouth. I can feel it down here and I've run out of water so I can't drink the water to get it out. But, oh yeah, I can feel it right there. I must admit with oh. you coughing and, and spluttering made me feel very queasy. Yeah, and we've been fasting so I was a bit anxious that now I saw that a fly, does that actually ruin the fast? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if flies have enough calories to, to break the fast, but... Yeah. Whew, hopefully. Now I'm just paranoid about any fly that goes near me. All right, <laughs> let's get back. Yeah, I'm anxious not to keep swallowing too much because I prefer to get it out than have it go down. Oh, it's going down. Oh. The best you can do is drink some water and uh, send it down there quicker if it's stuck in your throat. Yeah, it feels weird. Ugh. Well, welcome to Australia. <laughs> It's about how in high heat, it's a 15 degree temperature difference can cause loads more illnesses and so on. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, it's what, 40 something today? Yeah. Definitely feeling the lightheadedness when you go down and like stand up quickly. And we're drinking a ton of water as well. Yeah, two bottles. Maybe we need to get some salt. First time I ever going to prescribe chucking a bunch of salt on dinner. Yeah, we need it. We're sweating so much Re today. Replace, yeah. You can think how much you've sweaty. It's many liters. Uh, which way? Right or left? Ah, uh, let's go left. Okay.
So we've just started the Neuralangi Rock Art Walk. That's the one. And we've come to the first spot, which is this epic Amazing. cave, which you can see why people would have sheltered here. One very protected entrance in. So much cooler. And then, yeah, and then opens up to this massive overhang here. And then you can see all the indigenous art on the wall. That's really cool. God, it's so much nicer and cooler in here. The yeah. wind sort of flows through. It's funneled up here and then out there. You can hear the echo in your voice. Yeah, <laughs> well, you hear the echo, but you can also feel, can you feel the wind in your ears? Yeah. Like it sort of like hits here and blows past you because it like funnels it straight through under this rock. I was just reading the sign over here, so it was talking about they used to shelter here in October, December, so almost <laughs> around the same time we're here. Yeah. From the electrical storms and all the heavy rains. And because of the billabong we were just at, it has, you know, there was plenty of animals and plants and everything to, yeah. to feed them while they were here. So it was a little like larder. Makes or perfect fridge. sense, isn't it? You come up here to shelter and then on the floodplain you've got all the animals to, to graze on. Yep, they're eating kangaroo and everything from here. Fish down at the fish mussels, snakes all down at the billabong. Very different style, all sort of jumbled in, and I was sort of wondering why that was because there's you know some are really intricate really detailed lots of different colors and others are just big rocky shapes of like kangaroos or people running and apparently it's just over the time different styles have emerged and it's common for them to be layered over at the top of each other and that's actually how they date them but that's why you'll see like a kangaroo incredibly detailed over the top of you know, like almost a, a stick figure or very, very, you know, tribal man running with a with a spear and you, that massive blocky kangaroo there. But yeah, I didn't know that. So it's pretty cool. Just in case you were thinking about it. So no walking, obviously, but no cars either. Not to mention that we've just hiked up in the rocks here between <laughs> some very, very small spaces. I think if you could get a car up here to start with. I think they should be paying you the phone. <laughs> I think you deserve to be able to drive it down there. Jesus Christ, how would you get a car here? No. It's just all boulders and caves. <laughs> Look down there. Someone's obviously done it once and they felt they need to put the sign up, but I don't know how. Look. That's the sign. And then look at where they're expecting you not to go down in the car. I mean, A, where's the car coming from? I mean, You'd be a very good four-wheel driver to get down there. And then B. Well, no, there's only an A. Where, the, where would the car come from? Why would you want to go down there? Why is, it, why is it necessary to have that sign here? That's what I want to know. What has someone done that makes that sign necessary? I love a good, completely irrelevant and unnecessary sign. But I always wonder, the person putting it up, do they ever scratch their head and go, why? Why are we putting this up here? They probably do, and then the boss is just like, just do it. Stop asking questions. Put the sign up. No, just be like, stop asking questions, just put it up. <laughs> okay. drinking water but mm. I can't quench the thirst. No, it's like there's no amount of water that will do the trick. No, it's constantly thirsty. I wonder if it's because we're doing the uh, it's like second day of the two-day fast. Mm -hmm. You want to uh, explain that? Well, yeah I'll explain it because we've been listening to the book, it's called Lifespan, 
Uh, and in that, there's a load of takeaways, but I'm going to wait until we've finished the book to talk about all the takeaways. But one of them, we already did this. We already did 16-8 fasting, just missing breakfast, not eating, you know, for, for 16 hours of the day, effectively. And listening to the book just encouraged us to push a little bit further. So yesterday and today, we've done all-day fasts. I don't know if they're called all-day fasts because you technically mm. eat some dinner, but our dinners have been super healthy and super low calorie. So kind of doing, yeah, two days of pretty, pretty interesting fasting for us in the heat. So I don't know if it's the smartest decision. It has helped because you're not hungry because it's so hot. So that makes the fast easier to do, but I have been feeling quite lightheaded and I can't work out if it's just water and sweating and heat, which it very well could be, or if it's the fasting or if it's just a mix of the two. So just kind of keep hydrated, drink lots of water, should be fine. How many of these symptoms do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was I just talking about? Feeling thirsty and dry mouth. Tick. Yeah, if it said no matter what, how much water you drink, then I would definitely agree. Tiredness, yeah, check. Headache and dizziness, yeah, check. Especially like getting up, super dizzy. Pale, cool and clammy skin. Hmm. Well, we're sweating all the time. I don't know if I've gone full fainty pale skin yet, no. so maybe not in the last one. What does it say? Avoidance signs of heat illness. Advanced. Oh, advanced, sorry. Vomiting, cramping, irritable, mental confusion, skin flush, usually dry. Hmm. Well, I agree with most of that sign. I think we're okay at the moment. Yeah, we're fine. I think enough water, but... It is something you don't really think about till you come here, just being out all day in the sun mm. and the heat really gets to you. I'm looking forward to getting back. I won't think I'd ever say it, but I am looking forward to getting back to the coastline, a bit more cool climate. I think I've reached my peak in how hot I want to be. I don't yeah. know how people live in deserts. So I just, oof. Anyway, yeah. up to this lookout. It's only 500 meters up a, another rock climb, but... When in Rome, you gotta do it. Yeah. Regret it if you don't. Okay, so we've just gotten to the top and rewarded with a great view of the Neuralangi, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong again, aren't I? <laughs> the Neuralangi rock here, really cool coloration in the stone. You've got the oranges and the blacks, and it just looks like it's almost been painted. And then you're in the tree canopy, so the lookout's exactly at the same level as the top of these gum trees. So it almost looks like you're just floating in the canopy, which is epic. And that's like neon green. Yeah. Like it's, it's so green, so orange. It's like Nature's just turbocharged here. I was reading one of the signs down there and it said about the lightning god mm. who apparently lives above this stone, yeah. which is quite cool. Or oh, the lightning man. Lightning the lightning man, man so sorry, not lightning the god. The lightning and the pre monsoon season, which is October to December, isn't it? Yeah. Right For now. those big ferocious storms that we kind of saw the other night. We saw a lot of thunder and lightning in the skies, but nothing really hit us. But you can see how it get pretty crazy here in the wet which we might just get out in front of, to be honest. But I think now, probably time for us to go find a good spot for our dinner, picnic, yeah. and sunset. So off we go. So as usual, we've been mispronouncing everything, but this time it wasn't necessarily our fault because what we were calling it, Neuralangi Rock, is what Westerners or you know white Australians sort of mispronounced it to be because it's a rock nearby. And the top rock, the outcrop that we just read the look, the viewing platform for, is actually called, pronounced Bu Rongoi. Bu Rongoi. And the lower area is pronounced An Bang Bang? Yeah. An Bang Bang. Okay. So apologies for mispronouncing that. Apparently, when um, Westerners originally came, they were told, the area was Neuralangi Rock, and then they mistook all of these rocks for that. So the parks are actually asking people to pronounce it correctly. So apologies for mispronouncing it, and that's how you pronounce it.
just made it to our last spot for the day, Nuralanja. I think I'm saying it right, look out, where we are going to set up our little picnic and watch the sunset. Sure you're not mispronouncing that, this is actually Nuralanja Rock now. Well that's what all the signs say, so as long as I'm pronouncing it correctly, we should be alright. Pretty cool though. Yeah! And the sun's probably about an hour and a half away from setting. Yeah, so. the lighting is looking beautiful. Hopefully we get a good sunset. How cool is this? This is like an even better view than the viewing platform we were on before. Yeah. And you get a sense for just how green this place is. It's just a mat, it's like these rock formations and then just a massive green as far as the eye can see. This really makes me realize why Kakadu is a UNESCO World Heritage mm -hmm. List site. You just look back here, like you can see all the birds, all the cockatoos, everything. Rock formations, there's even a bloody rainbow there. Green as far as the eye can see, only stopping at massive rock mountains. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, this is the first time since we've been here that I've really got to see Kakadu from the air like this. And yeah, loving it. set up doing a long time lapse of the sky here and the sun going down over the rocks here and I'm trying to remember the indigenous name because it's not Neuralangi we're on that rock now the sun's actually setting behind us so at the moment the rock face is all lit up so it'd be really interesting to see what happens over time as the sun goes down is this all going to turn into reds and purples and everything I've got fingers crossed it is pretty cool to see across the escarpment here that there's this floodplain the billabong where we were and then you got these massive clouds and over there you can actually see the rain coming down from it so we're sitting here it's hot we're in the sun and you look over there and you can see so far that you just see these massive verticals of rain coming out of the clouds and we're sitting here eating vegemite shapes how much more aussie do you want to get than that having a little picnic in the sun and you're just watching like nature explode like even looking down here you got all the birds flying rain coming down over there it's just like it's like having a front row seat to the best IMAX show of nature ever the flies I know they're bugging me Once again, thanks for watching guys and don't forget to join us next week when we head to Catherine Gorge and Edith Falls. Until then, stay wild and free. Catch you then.